Howdy everybody, this is Bake with IronThroneCraft.com and today we're going to be doing a hero rundown. So I'm going to show you all my heroes, my runes, my gear, everything like that. Everybody that I've got appointed and how I set it all up. And if you like what you see, don't forget to give us a like, give us a follow, and help you optimize your Iron Throne account and start dominating your kingdom. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our Citadel and click appoint and let's just look at the appointed heroes here. First one, most important one, Guard Captain. What this guy does is he defends your castle. Anytime you get attacked. Second one is Architect. Construction speed, pretty straightforward. You're going to want to use Glorious Gear on that one. And that just increases your construction speed. Scholar increases your research speed. So you're going to want to use Sagacious Gear on that guy. And one of the most important heroes to upgrade and make sure you've got fully optimized because you should always be researching something. Your Treasurer is a little bit less important. He provides you with production rate on your resource buildings. The other thing he does is he provides you with uh, maximum capacity Stuff like that. Not as important as the other ones. Drill Sergeant, incredibly important. He provides you with training cost reductions, and he also provides you with training speed. So you want to make sure that you have your Drill Sergeant, sergeant set correctly, otherwise you're going to be spending a lot of extra speed ups on training troops. Your Infirmary Officer is one of the new ones, and what your Infirmary Officer does is increases your injured troop capacity and your healing speed and your healing cost reduction if you have any of that. So very important for anybody that might be getting hit. Master Craftsman, you see, I don't even have anybody appointed to this one. But what he does is he increases your trap production speed, which is important, and he also increases your crafting speed. So let's go check out my actual heroes. My first one here, Evil Bake, is the Revenant, and what he does is he's infantry attack. You see I've got Conqueror gear on him. That's my best gear set. And then also for runes, first one I've got is Mighty Battle Rune of Blades. That's a mighty one that came out of a pack, and then the other runes that you want under your infantry hero, if you don't have any mighty runes, are going to be Battle Rune of Domination which increases your leveraged infantry damage. Leverage damage is incredibly important, as we've shown in lots of videos and lots of invader dangers, everything like that. You want to make sure you have maximum leverage. My second highest hero is Tough Bake. You see, he's wearing Dark Lord gear. I'm one of the few people that is lucky enough to have a full set of immortal Dark Lord gear. Started leveling up my head and my chest. The reason for that is because those provide troop defense and troop HP. For runes, you see that I've got all Siege HP runes, Battle Rune of Survival. I've even upgraded that one a little bit from my Domination Rewards. The reason I'm able to do this is because my bottom tier is all Siege, as we've talked about a lot of times, which allows me to focus my runes on my Guard Captain, give myself a little bit extra boost, take hits a little bit better. Next in line is Queen Bake, who is Zenobia, who's the reward from winning Team Deathmatch matches, and she's my Archer Hero. You see she's wearing all Destroy gear. It's a little bit lower than my Infantry gear because it's just flat out harder to get Archer gear than it is Infantry gear. You see, her runes are all leveraged archer damage. I don't have a mighty battle rune of archers, so I ran with all leveraged archer damage on her runes. Again, leveraged damage is just one of the most important stats in the game. Next hero, Ninja Bake. He's Achilles. He's from winning a battle royale. If you haven't done that yet, you should go watch our videos and see how to win your Achilles because it's very important to get as many heroes as possible, which is why what we're running through and we'll show you right now. For runes, you see that I do have a mighty battle rune of lethality, which increases cav attack by 30%. And then my other two, again, just running with uh, leverage cavalry damage increase. Again, very important stat, so you want to make sure that you have those as high as possible on all of your attack heroes. Those are the four heroes that everybody should usually have. They're going to have one infantry, one archer, and one cav hero, and then they're going to have one guard captain. A lot of times your guard captain will be wearing guardian gear. Uh, if you manage to get your hands on Dark Lord, I recommend running Dark Lord and stacking Siege up. So let's look at my appointed heroes. This is the Drill Sergeant. This is the one that increases training speed. And so the gear that I'm running is Tacticians, which only comes in packs. And then I've got an Eldris file for my last accessory. You get that from Town Mode. That one's free. So instead of buying two packs of Tacticians for the one extra accessory, I just ran with the Eldris file. You see the runes over there, I'm running Troop Training Speed. There's also a Troop Training Capacity option. You definitely want to run with Training Speed. You want to reduce the amount of Troop Speeds that you need to use. Capacity far less important than troop training speed, so run with those runes. Next hero down the line is Fat Bake. He's my scholar, and he's running all sagacious gear, as you can see. This is the economy hero that you really want to focus on. If you get any rune upgrades from Domination, you should be using those on your research speed runes. The reason for that is because you should always be researching, period. You see there, 11 or 15.84% from my upgraded economy rune of research speed and only 12%. So I got an extra 3% from one month of Domination there. It's pretty good. You also notice on my Sagacious gear that only my chest, my head, and my offhand are upgraded. Same thing you see here, Big Bake is my architect. He's construction, and it's the same way. I've even got a purple accessory there. Running all construction speed runes, obviously. That's what we're worried about on our architect. 
But let's look at this gear. You see the glorious ring right there? It's purple, and it gives 30% construction speed. You look at the gold one, and it gives 40% construction speed. The reason you see those specific items upgraded on my Sagacious and my Glorious gear is because it is more efficient to upgrade those ones than it is to go from purple to yellow on your last accessory or to upgrade the other ones because the other ones just require more diamonds and magic imbued stones. So those are all my appointed, very important heroes. This is my infirmary officer. You see, she's wearing the Hakan's gear, which comes from the new town mode, town mode 3.0. And that's all free stuff. You can get all those things, and what it does is increases your injured troop capacity, which is uh, very important if you're going to be taking any hits. As you can see, also using three economy runes of injured troop capacity, because that's what I care about. I want to increase the number of troops that go to the hospital. I'm not as concerned with the amount of time it takes to revive them, because it's far cheaper than training new ones anyways. So you want to stack those runes up. This is my treasure. What he does is increases production speed, as we talked about. So I've just got production gear on him. And I've got three Economy Rune of Silver productions on him because obviously silver is the hardest resource to come by, so that's the most important one for me. Uh, again, I don't have the Craftsman Hero appointed, so I don't have that one to show you. Let's go back and look at now my, what I call my off heroes. This is Genie Bake. He's wearing all my Guardian gear. And the reason I've got Guardian gear equipped on him is because I use him for monster hunting. This is an incredibly important hero for people to have at higher levels. You see, the runes that I'm using are all Battle Rune of Challenge, which increases your elite monster discovery chance. So you're more likely to discover Chaotic Whites and Cerberus. That's very important. You, everybody needs a Monster Slaying Hero. You want a Monster Slaying Hero wearing those runes, and then you just stack your gear onto them based upon what you're going to be hunting. So you see, what I do when I'm hunting, like 32s, is I'll go and I'll put on my Conqueror gear, along with my Guardian weapons, and I'll increase his combat power up to the point that he can kill 32s. The reason I do this is because... Anytime I'm killing 30 pluses, I want to make sure I have a higher chance of spawning a Cerberus. This guy has all my runes. I don't want to have to switch my runes out on my combat heroes. So I just stack all my best gear on him. That way he goes out and hunting Cerberus. Next one's Blonde Bake. She's wearing my True World's Mighty Armor and the rest of it. And the important thing to notice about this is that Troop Stronghold attack down there at the bottom. So what I use this gear set and this hero for is killing Defiled Strongholds and killing Chaotic Strongholds. She slays them. And the reason for that, well, I'm also using a unity ring right there to increase my rally march size that I got from the first domination. But the reason I use her for strongholds is because you see I stacked march speed runes on her. This makes my marches go faster at those strongholds. It's a little bit of a utility, somewhat unnecessary, but if you've got the runes, you might as well do it. And so she absolutely destroys chaotic and defiles strongholds. Now this is something a lot of people haven't set up yet. This is an arena hero. I've got three of them. You see he's wearing chaotic white frost armor and he's wearing chaotic accessories, both of them. And you see the reason for that is because the Dimensional Battle Archers attack. I've got my messed up crafts, purple destroyer gear there for archer stuff, and then for runes, I've got all Dimensional Battle Siege Increase. And this is because in arenas, I run with seven archers and three siege. And so you're going to see that I've got three heroes that are set up in this exact same fashion. I'll show you those other ones. Next one is going to be Pale Bake. Notice the gear. Looks pretty similar, right? Still archer gear with chaotic archer gear, and then I've got three siege runes on her as well. And then my last one is going to be set up the exact same way. And that's just because at the top end of arenas, you want to be running archers and siege. And the only way to increase your siege attack is through an old item for an offhand or through those runes. And I've got plenty of purple destroyer stuff because I always mess up on the crafts. Now let's go back and look. This is Samurai Bake, and this is my Death Knight hero. I use her in Team Deathmatch. You see that I've got all additional damage and raid runes stacked up. And then I've got four pieces of Hunter's Mark. The head, the chest, two accessories. Your weapon and your offhand, you want to keep those as combat gear. You see, this is what I've dumped all my Berserker materials into, is this offhand right here, which gives me 2592 hero attack. That's multiplied by my Hunter's Mark gear. And so that means that I can one-shot the Death Knight in Team Deathmatch. That's pretty important. And I've always got this hero equipped like this. When the Death Knight comes around weekly, I'll switch some of that stuff around to other ones. But this one's always sitting like this for Team Deathmatch. Moving forward... Let's go look at my last couple of heroes here, and this one is, again, the arena one, and then this one, you see she's wearing all purple Dominator gear. The reason for that is because I also use her for strongholds. It's all purple, it's all crafts that I messed up anyways, and then you see on my runes, again, I'm using march speed runes, and this is just so I get to those chaotic and de defile strongholds faster. The purple Dominator with my research is enough to one-shot any level 30, and then you see this other one, Fast Fake, she's the same way. All purple Dominator gear. I've actually got a gold Dominator helm there. But that's just because I can't upgrade the other one yet because it's level 10 and it takes two. 
But again, the runes over here, I'm using all Stronghold March Speed runes. So these are my Stronghold Slaying heroes. I've got three of them. One's wearing True World, two are wearing Dominator. The reason for that is because I always want to be sending cavalry at those Strongholds just for the March Speed. Very important to get there as quickly as possible. I want to be able to march long distances in a much shorter amount of time. So I stack up Stronghold and Troop Speed runes on those ones. This is my Gatherer guy. He's got a full set of Collectors. And he's got three runes that are all resource gathering speed. So I, it just makes uh, Infernos a little bit faster and it helps out in Team Deathmatch if I do happen to be gathering on tiles in there. So he's not appointed. He's level 40. I put a Conqueror ring on him for no reason whatsoever, but I also set the trait to gathering, as you can see. Now, when you're watching this, you're probably going to wonder how I have all of these runes. A lot of you folks watching this aren't going to have all level 6 runes, and that's completely fine. But the way that I got all my runes is through killing level 30 Chaotic Strongholds. Killing a level 30 gives you level 4 runes. And then after that, you go in, you fuse them up, you get to higher levels. As you can see, I've killed a whole lot of Chaotic Strongholds. Through World Infernos, through Inferno events, you know, whatever like that. I haven't fused after the last couple of events that I've done. That's why I have 4,700 runes to fuse up right now. But as you can see, I am overflowing with runes. I don't need any more of these runes. All I'm looking for are the Mighties now. What people don't understand, though, is that if you fuse and then you double-click the screen, it goes pretty quick. And so the method that I use to rune out my heroes is as soon as I finished all those Chaotix and everything like that, and I had a whole ton of level 4 runes, is I went in and I set my runes up perfectly using level 4 runes on all of my heroes. Everybody was wearing a level 4 rune. After that, I went in, I fused them all up to purple gear, purple runes. And then I went in and I replaced as many of those blue runes with purples as I could. Once I had everybody up to purple, I'd used all the purples. Then I started fusing up to level 6. And then I went in and I replaced the level 5 runes with level 6s. So it's a process. It takes a while. It takes a lot of chaotic. But you can get those runes up there and they're an enormous, enormous help on your account's power. They're optimization that you can use. They reduce your research speed, construction speed, training speed, and they give you a lot of combat stats. Specifically on your guard captain if you're stacking siege, that's a lot of extra siege HP that you can get in there. Or for your attack heroes, it's a lot of extra troop leverage that you can get in there, which again is a very important stat, as I may have said a couple times in this video already. So, hope this helped out. Feel free to comment with any questions, comments, anything like that about how to acquire these runes, how to upgrade them. Comment, let us know where we should invade next weekend. Give us a like, give us a follow, ironthronecraft.com.